ونسلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وأصحابه وبارك وسلم Honorable ulama, respected elders, brothers, mothers, sisters, beloved youth, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All praise is due to Almighty Allah, the sustainer, nourisher, and cherisher of the universe. Peace, blessings, and salutations be upon our beloved master and leader, Nabi Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah, tonight's program we will divide it into three parts. First, we will speak about the importance of Jumu'ah, seeing that tonight is later to Jumu'ah, the night of Friday. Then we will speak about Hajj and related issues. Then we will open the floor, whatever questions you have, Inshallah, you are welcome to ask. Alhamdulillah, we must thank our Qarisa for the wonderful rendition. I just heard the ending. You see every verse ends with a ra, with a re. So when the Arab would look at it, he would admire it. So he placed his verse and he said, Ma hadha kalamul bashar. He also ended it on the ra. And he said that this is not the speech of human being. So you need to understand the beauty, the glory, the style, the diction of Quran. You and me, we search if I Shaykh read about Jahannam also, we make Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. We don't know what's going on, you understand? So this type of thing. We some poor Simon people, we speak of Jahannam, we shouting Allah Akbar at this time. So anyway, so that is now a different topic. Let's carry on with our topic for tonight, inshallah, that is Jumu'ah. Let's see what we are supposed to do tonight, tomorrow, inshallah. Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man qara'a surat ha-mim ad-dukhan laylatul jumu'ah, ghufira lahu, whosoever reads surah ha-mim ad-dukhan, surah number 44, in the 25th juice, is just four pages, so the person will be forgiven. Each one of us can do it, inshallah, before we retire and sleep. We can't manage tonight and read it tomorrow. So then also you will reap some great reward. So in that way, Surah Dukhan, Surah number 44, in the 25th Jews, 25th Para, every one of us should make a concerted effort. Second one, Man qara'a Surah Al-Kahfi Yawm Al-Jumu'ah Ada alahu min al-Nur ma bain al-Jumu'atain is authentic hadith in Sunan Nasai. Whosoever reads Surah Kahf on a Friday, the night of Friday, the day of Friday, Almighty Allah would bless that person with radiance and effulgence from one Friday right to the next Friday. You all know we got so much uplang money, we don't know what to do with it. But when load shedding comes, we all sit quiet. No TV, no cell phone, no, no, no this cordless phone, nothing working. DC, direct current, AC, alternate current, A and C, and no current. So we all know what happens. So when there is load shedding, so imagine it is load shedding in the grave. Imagine there is load shedding in the year after. We never read Surah Kaf. Then what will happen? So one to ah, you brothers, sisters, each one of us should learn tonight Surah 66, verse number 8. Short dua, the ulama present will teach you. Surah 66, verse number 8. Rabbana atmim lana noorana wa lana. O oh Allah, you complete and perfect for us the noor. Wa lana and forgive us. So we are begging Almighty Allah to bless us with the noor. So we want the noor in this world. We want the noor in the grave. We want the noor in Jannah. Every way we want this light and radiance and effulgence. So Surah Dukhan we read, then we read Surah Kahf. Then if someone has to ask us, brothers, sisters, give Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a gift, what will we say? Before I go on, maybe you're wondering how come I came late. Thursday night, alhamdulillah, 11 years now. 
that I do program for Voice of the Cape, you know, it's Q&A. So seven to eight, we were busy with that. So we read Isha, don't worry, yeah. so you understand? <laughs> so it might be one thing comes, we have big lecture so we read Isha already, alhamdulillah. So anyway, so we must read Surah Dukhan, Surah 44, we read Surah Kahf, Surah number 18, we read the Dua, Surah 66, verse 8, Rabbana atmim lana nurana waqfil lana innaka ala kulli shayin qadir. And thereafter, brothers and sisters, someone must ask us, give Mustafa Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi sallam a gift. So what will we say? You just go outside here and what you will see, you will see a Porsche, you will see BM, you will see Mercedes, you will see 101 smart cars. So somebody will say a car, gold, we got enough Kruger coins. Somebody will say this, the best gift for the best of Allah's creation on the best day and night of the week is durood, salawat, salutations upon Nabi al-Mustafa The Master alayhi salam commanded us, Aksiru alayya min as-salati yawm al You, the Ummah, increase the durood and salawat, the quantity, upon me on the day of Friday. So it shows the night and day, abundant durood. We're going shop, we're going job, we are here in the kitchen, sisters. So keep the tongue moist with durood, salawat, any durood. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma swalli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad. Any durood sharif, so you try and read it abundantly. It will enhance our love for Mustafa, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Master, alayhi salatu salam, will intercede for us on the day of Qiyamah. Shafa'ati li ahlil kabair min ummati. My intercession is for those people of my ummah who have committed major, major sins. Did we ask Allah today? Ya Allah, grant us the intercession of the Master, alayhi salam. So every day we should be asking. Allahumma rzuqna shafa'atan nabi al-Mustafa, sallallahu alayhi salam. The hadith in Mishkat Sharif. Ya Allah, grant us the intercession of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa You say the topic is Hajj. Your leg stories also. Some brothers here, I see one, two of them, I think we were together in Hajj. When we make dua, Hajj time, Ya Allah, accept our Hajj, they all make Ameen. Ya Allah, accept our Umrah, all make Ameen. Ya Allah, accept our Ziyarah to Madinah Munawara, sub Ameen. Ya Allah, let us die in Medina. The Amin come out softly. <laughs> <laughs> so you ask them why? They say, no, the woman say shopping baki chair. <laughs> you say, it's too much do. And the man say, go real chair and go for dollars chair, you see. Too much dollars and too many reals still left. So, so the love for the world has saturated our hearts. Even to die in Medina, then we say, no, next time, next trip we make, you will see, not now. So brothers, we must remember that that is what we need to ask Allah, especially on a Friday. مَنْ تَوَفَّاهُ اللَّهُ يَوْمَ الْجُمُعَ أَوْ لَيْلَتَهَا وَقَاهُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فِتْنَةِ الْقَبَرِ Whosoever all might Allah gives death on a Friday. The day of Friday or the night of Friday tonight, all might Allah protects that person from the torment of the grave. To die with Iman, obviously. So that person there, Allah will protect him from the chastisement of the grave. The hadith in Tirmidhi. You may be heard in your home, you may you have the books of Abu Hassan Ali Nadwi, Sheikh Hazrat Maulana. We met him many times, alhamdulillah, what a great alim. In Ramadan, on a Friday, he passed away. And on that Friday, that was the last day of his on this earth, he read Surah Yasin 14 times. See, that is the type of dua we must make. Allahumma j'al khayra ayyamina yawman al qatafi. Ya Allah, make that the best day in our life, the day we come to meet you. Our parents are too special. We don't follow all this non-Muslim culture. Dump the parents in the old age home and then make one Father's Day and Mother's Day. We lost our parents. They passed away with Iman and Islam. They have hukuk and rights over us even after death. That is Islam. Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man zara qabra abawayhi aw ahadihima yawm al jumuah Who goes and visit the grave of both his parents or one of his parents on a Friday, parents will be Muslim. So in a case like that, you visit them, the men. 
you go to the grave of your father, mother, both of them, on a Friday, he's forgiven and he's considered a pious son of his parents. The hadith is mentioned in Bayhaqi. See, all this is what you want. I don't know if you're doing it or not. Allah Ta'ala reward you if you're doing If you're not doing, then Mawlana Sahib, Ab Shuru Kar So you, the trustees, all that, I don't know who's the trustees, all that, so, but you should all try it, mashallah. Last week I was in Rustenburg, so I mentioned it there Thursday, uh, Friday morning, after Fajr I mentioned it. I had Jumma day and then night lecture. So I see, mashallah, when I walked in Jumma time, so the masjid was full with that. Mustafa, what I'm talking about here is it, three references. Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Jammi ruha al jumu'ah. The hadith in Ibn Majah. They take your loban, take your bakhur, and apply it in your masjid every Friday. So remember, that's a sunnah. The hadith is in Ibn Majah. Ibn Qayyim al Jawziya rahimahullah wrote in Zadul Ma'ad, it's a great famous work. That in time of Amir al-Mu'mineen, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that they used to have a person by the name of Nu'im al-Mujammir. Nu'im Loban Wala. Some of you from India, Pakistan, you'll know. A person said, hey, they call him Topi Wala. To sell watch, Gari Wala. Socks, Moza Wala. So his name became Nu'im al-Mujammir. Loban Wala. So he was appointed. So we need one Loban Wala here in this area. So every Friday you take, you put the Loban, everything, speak to the trustees. Maybe one trustee say he knows he's blocked in. Those trustees have a lot of stories also. <laughs> so you understand? So all this time. So the trustee who knows he's blocked, you sit that side in the corner. So this time, okay. So anyway, there, so that is second one. Third one, you must remember, Hazrat Mufti Shafiza, I met him also, Alhamdulillah. Hazrat Mufti Shafi Sahib, Rahimullah, Grand Mufti, one of the greatest ulama in the Pak produced. Hazrat Mufti Shafi Sahib passed away in 76. He wrote in Adab al Masajid, Ye Sunnat Matruk ho gaya hai is zamane mein. That people have forgotten, abandoned, neglected the Sunnah. So, three references. So, try it every Friday. Imam Sahib, Mulana Sahib, Apazad. So, all of you, mashallah, why must we leave it? Revive this type of Sunnah. So that is our function, wherever we go. Now I went seven countries in Ramadan, before Ramadan. So wherever I went, we used to speak about it. I went to Caribbean, UK, all that. So in that way there, our job is this, function is this. You revive the sunnah of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then, mashallah, all other sunnahs you'll know. That is, you must wear nice clothes, take bath, cook your nails, all that. Between Asr and Maghrib is Sa'i Mustajaba. And that is when du'as are accepted. Allah says, manwana hai. We all got problems. Now they don't say problems, they say challenges. Our brothers, one eye is on the TV, one eye is on the currency. <laughs> say, look at my upla. No value. It's gone over 13 to a dollar. It's gone 20.23 to a pound. When I was there, it was 19.50 to a pound. Now it's gone 20.23. So, so you must remember, brothers, that all these are halat of dunya, vasasatyuj, in English you say, vasasatyuj, the ups and downs of worldly life. So that is what happens in life. Wakte tulu deka, wakte guru deka, I saw the rise and fall of people, we saw the rise and decline of nations, wakte tulu deka, wakte guru deka, ab fikr akhirat hai, dunya ko khub deka. So we must start thinking of the year after. We saw so many places in this world, and same thing it is. So we must remember these things here. Yeah, these halal conditions will come, some favorable, some unfavorable. So we have to challenge it, and we have to go and try and keep our Islam. Not we just go with the flow. So first and foremost, we are Muslim. So that is your introduction for tonight's talk. Let's speak about Hajj. I think here yeah, most of you, you've been for Umrah, been for Hajj. Let's speak about those things that we don't know. The things you know, we know. Hajj is a journey of love. The whole journey is of love. See, in Ramadan, we all were fasting. First 20 days, Ya Allah, for your love, I will not eat, I will not drink, I will not fulfill my conjugal rights during the day fasting hours. 
Last ten days came, the love was increasing. So what happened? Ya Allah, I left my wife, I left my children, I left my home, palatial home, and now I came in your house, I made etika. So the heart is getting saturated with the love of Allah. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ those people who possess true iman, they intensely in love with Allah. When Ramadan finished, immediately after that, Allah Ta'ala speaks, al The months of Hajj are well known. What are the months of Hajj? From Eid al-Fitr to Eid al-Adha. First Ramadan to 10th Zil-Hijjah, that are the months of Hajj. So now prove your love. You left your eating, you left your drinking, you left your wife, you left your home. Now show your whole love. So we say, Ya Allah, this hay is not important, I will shave it. Ya Allah, this clothing is not important, I will wear my kafan. Nothing is important, your love is important, Ya Allah. I come with the slogan of a lover. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. Labbaik la sharika laka labbaik. Inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk la sharika Now this morning I was teaching some students. So I told them the story. You all like stories. 10, 15, Allah, I don't know, how many years ago. We were our camp was South Africans. South Africans, we pay more to be nearer to the shaitan. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> we pay more to be nearer to the shaitan in Mina. Molana, you here? How are you? You alright? I'm a student. I'll just him now. So maybe he heard the story in class. So anyway, that, so the point I was making is this, that the South African, you know South African simple Simon, so they don't know no Arabic, so he doesn't know Arabic, and the police, they, mashallah, they don't know anything but Arabic. So opposite our camp was al Bayk, you know this al Bayk restaurant. So he, Bichara, he got lost. Now if you get lost in Mina, you look right, left, everywhere, everything looks same, everybody in the Haram. So he went to the police. He told the police, al bake al bake So the police told him, Lab bake Allahumma la <laughs> so, so, so brothers, you must remember that you need to learn all these things properly. You must know where your camp and tent is. And where al bake and bake and all these things. So anyway, that is the slogan of the lover. Let's take each one quickly. Nine o'clock I'll be finished, then I'll open the floor. Baytullah Kaaba Musharrafa. Why the Kaaba is called Kaaba? You know? You see this ankle is called Kaab. You look at the ankle, so you will see it is protruding. It's coming out. So anything that's high is called Kaab. Wa kawaiba atraba to the bosom of the woman also. The breast. So remember the Baytullah, the Kaaba is called Kaaba because Makan un Murtafi is something high. Now the non-Muslims, they saw on TV the Muslim going round and round the Baytullah. So they asked us on the radio, you Muslims are crazy guys. We know you're ter- terrorists, but we didn't know you made also. <coughs> so we asked him why we made. He said, for what you go round and round? I told him, no, we're the most sober people in this world. That wine, dine and swine we leave for you. So understood? Then why we go round and round? We go round and round the Baytullah. When your clothing is dirty, then you put your dirty clothing in the washing machine. It spins and goes round, 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 comes out pure and clean. So the Muslim go round and round, he comes out purged and cleansed from his sins. Understood? <coughs> Anybody going for Hajj? Any brother here? Anybody going? You going? When you going? Another brother? Anybody? Masha'Allah. Masha'Allah. So they will give you all advices now. Man tawafa bil bayt in khamsin amarra the hadith in Tirmidhi. You make tawaf 50 times. Not of Dawood Muta. You know Dawood Muta? Bin Dawood, we call him Dawood Muta. So not of Dawood Muta. You make tawaf 50 times of Baytullah. Man tawafa bil bayt in khamsin amarra kharaja min zunubihi ka yawmin waladatu ummuhu. You come out from your son, so pure and cleansed, like the day your biological mother gave birth to you. So everything has got great, great significance. You go to Hajar-e-Aswad, 
Nowadays the crowd is very big, but anyway, make dua, you get chance, especially if you're going first time in your life. The hadith of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned in Akbar in Makkah by Faqihi, that lahu lisanun yantiku bihi, that this hajr aswad will get the tongue, it will speak with it, and the people who kissed it, so yes, the people who kissed it, the same hajr aswad will speak in favor of them, وَيَشْهَدُ عَلَىٰ مَنْ إِسْتَلَمَهُ بِحَقِّينَ The people who kissed it or you made ishara to it from far, so it will bear testimony in your favor on the day of Qiyamah. I came here to your town, I don't know all these places where you live, I came to Pretoria, you know, Chuani and Chuani and all that, we don't know, Pretoria we know, TP, you know, TP is Pretoria, you know, all Transvaal, so that, that we know. All these others we don't know all this. So anyway, that Pretoria we know. When we come here, Pretoria, I meet you, first thing what we do, we shake hand. You come Baytullah, what you do? First thing you shake the hand of Allah. How? Ka'annahu yusafihu yadar Rahman. When you come to Hajar Aswad, Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it is as though as you are shaking the hand of all Allah. Yeah. You understood my brother? So learn where you are. Ba adab ba nasib, be adab be nasib. Today the Ummah goes, the one one is in the Haram, and one hand he got his iPad, iPhone. The family was sitting there, the wife said, I got the iPad. The daughter said, I got the iPhone. And the son said, I got the i. What the other one? iPod, you understood? And the father said, I paid for everything. <laughs> so all this. When you dare, brothers, listen to what Quran says. The Haram, Makkah, Mina, Muzdalifa, M3. You got M3 outside your people, BM. So remember M3. M3. Makkah, M. Mina, M. Muzdalifa, M. M3, that's the Haram. Arafat is not in the Haram. It's outside the Haram. In the Haram, you make intention of committing sin. Allah says, I will punish you severely. Just intention. وَمَنْ يُرِيدْ فِيهِ بِإِلْحَادٍ بِذُلْمٍ نُذِقُ مِنْ عَذَابٍ عَلِيمٍ So remember brothers, you see our brothers, we see other people doing, so we want to do also. No, go with adab, with respect, Allah will bring you again and again, inshaAllah. So when we go there, so you try and kiss Hajr Aswad, then you perform your tawaf, you come towards Rukn Yamani, the hadith in Ibn Majah, Allahumma, your brothers going for Hajj, learn the duas, learn the big, learn the dua. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-afwa wal-afiyah fi dunya wal-akhirah. Ya Allah, I beg of you. You forgive me and you grant me safety, comfort wherever I am in this world, in the year after. Seventy angels say Ameen when you are approaching Rukhne Yaman. Imagine. I mentioned now on air, last five minutes they tell me, give advice from Cape Town, mashallah, a lot of brothers, sisters still going. So I told them the story, I said it was raining in Makkah. So they went to the Sheikh. They said, Sheikh, what would we do now? So what must we do now? You know, they go to the Sheikh and ask. So Sheikh say, Khan and Irian, go in the rain and go make the wafa. So why? Not Cape Town Sheikh, proper Sheikh from overseas, Makkah, Medina. So the sheikh, obviously he didn't know African, so he told him in Arabic. So he said, go make, you understood, tawaf. Why must you make tawaf in the rain? Everywhere else in the world, the rain comes, we dash for cover. But in Makkah, when it rains, you must dash to the Kaaba. Why? All my Allah says, when you're going to make tawaf, where are you going to make tawaf? By the Baytullah. Inna awwala baytiyu hudiya linna sila alladhi bi bakkata mubaraka. Allah Ta'ala says that area is Mubarak, it's a blessed place. So you're going to read Quran, when you come to Rukhna Yamani, to Hajar Aswad, Rabbana dina fi dunya hasana, wa fil akhirati hasana, wa qina adabana. So you read the dua, so the Quran is what? Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun. So the Quran Sharif is Mubarak. The place is Mubarak, and the Quran is Mubarak. Now the rain is coming down. Quran says, Surah Qaf. وَنَزَّلْنَا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً مُبَارَكًا We send down the Mubarak water. 
The water is Mubarak, the place is Mubarak, what you're reading is Mubarak, and you're making tawaf. So what will happen to you? What will happen to you? You become Mubarak. Your wife will tell you, good for nothing. You tell your wife, do my way or catch the highway. But she's there, she's becoming Mubarak. You got? So that is why in the rain you go and make tawaf. Because it is Allah's mercy coming down. So we carry on, ma'u zamzam. See, brothers, you got other than one problem, knee paining and toe paining and stomach paining. There's 101 incidents, I just give you three, four. Al-Imam Shafi'i, rahimahullah, the great giant, he went to Baytullah, he started drinking zamzam. He made dua, Ya Allah, give me profound knowledge. When we asked the celebrated student, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, Oh, Ahmad, tell us who Shafi'i, rahimahullah, to all of them. He said, Ash-Shafi'i ka shamsi li dunya. You see when the sun rises and then is blazing. So you see it is illuminating the whole world. Imam Shafi illuminated the world with his knowledge. Baraka of Zamzam water. Second one, the love for Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa And the love for the sunnah of the master alayhi sallam. He made dua, Ya Allah, make me a Rami. Oh no, you got your notes of Hajj. Check it out, you find it. <coughs> so, you want to make me a Rami. What's a Rami? You all only know Rami play cards. You understand what that is? Isn't you all know about that? That Rami is Shaitan Rami. So, I'm speaking about Rami. Wama Rameita is Rameita. So, make me a master marksman. When I shoot the arrow, I must hit the target. So, Imam Shafi says himself, he says, when I made this dua, nine times out of ten I should hit the target. And then third dua he made, Ya Allah, let me become a person who will enter Jannah to fill those. All three duas are accepted. So see what duas there is to me. Amir al-Mu'mineen said, Umar radiallahu anhu, he's given Jannah great tidings already. But they are concerned, Ya Allah, I'm drinking the Zamzam water. Tomorrow on the day of justice, don't make me from those people who will remain thirsty. See, we don't even think of all these kind of things. Abdullah bin Mubarak, rahimahullah, went to Zamzam. You know, that time, anybody of you went in the 50s, 60s, 70s, the well was there, you could see the well. So when he went, so he went, he read the whole hadith. أخبرني ابن ابن المؤمل أن أنا حدثني أبو زبير أن حدث أن أنا أخبره أن أولي جابي أن قال قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يرى ده هو شيء ما هو زم زمالي با شوري با له يا الله you from نبي صلى الله عليه وسلم promise whatever intention you drink زم زم worth that is what will happen so he became such a great mujahid such a great muhaddi such a great scholar Four months of the year he would teach hadith. Four months of the year he would go and fight in the path of Allah. Four months of the year he used to work so that he could spend on the pious people, the awliya Allah. That was Abdullah Mubarak Rahman. So like that, great, great people. <coughs> Our Ustad Sheikh Sabuni, Hafizahullah, he told me himself that when he went to the Baytullah, he went inside. Allah Ta'ala give you opportunity, give us all opportunity to go right inside. Man dakhal al-bayt, dakhala fi hasana. When you go inside the baytullah, you enter in goodness. Wa kharaja min sayi'a. And you come out from your sins. And wa kharaja maghfuran lahu. Allah announces you are forgiven. The hadith in Bayhaqi. He says, Allah gave me five daughters when I went to the baytullah. So inside the Baytullah, I cried, I cried, he says, and I make dua to Allah, give me one, two sons, I'll make them hafiz. Subhanallah, Allah blessed him with three sons, all three sons are hafiz. <coughs> so today, Labi is the greatest commentator of the Noble Quran. When I was there in March, April, I went to his house. These are our Asatiza, when we meet them, we kiss their hand, we kiss their forehead. So his son Ahmad is telling me, and I was sitting there by him, he said, ask him, ask him what he did in the hospital. So I said, I don't ask him, he's my ustad, I ask you. So what he did, he said, he told us, he's over 80 years old, 82, 83 years old. He told the doctors, give me, discharge me now, I'll go home. I've got a lot of job to do. 
So doctors asked his son, Ahmed, what job your father is doing now, 82? He said, no, I started one tafsir, I want to complete that tafsir. He already wrote 10 tafsir of the Quran. Quran Sharif ko khatam karna maksood nahi, apni zindagi ko Quran Sharif mein khatam karna maksood. The aim is not to finish the Quran, brothers. The aim is to finish our life in the Quran and Sunnah. That is what we should be learning. Understand this thing? So anyway, we told you a little bit about the Baytullah Kaaba. We told you a little bit, Alhamdulillah, 2011, even I went inside the Kaaba. So it was a Saturday. Today is what, Thursday night, huh? Yeah. Friday night till then, I didn't have the card. So they told me, you will go, but they didn't have the card. So then the Sheikh, he phoned me. After Maghrib, I saw my phone, I saw, so I knew now something happened. So he asked, where are you? You know, to get excited. So I said, I'm in the haram. He said, come here. So then he don't speak that thing about, he speak about other things. Then in short time, he gave me the card. It's a beautiful gold card to give you with your name and all that. You turn it around, it's written a khamsa daqaiq. Then you can only go five minutes inside. There's Muhammad, where is it? Muhammad Mawda? Is there? He also went inside. Is there, is it? I saw him Maghrib then. Yeah, he also went inside. So anyway, you must remember, I know Muhammad from Newcastle. So anyway, you must remember, so I made intention, I read Quran, I left the last 10 surahs. So when I look at the Baytullah, even now, I said, Ya Allah, I went inside two walls, I read, still two walls left. Ya Allah, to go again inside. You see? So you in must never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Remember that. People can say what they want to, you don't worry about people. You speak to Allah. You understand? Don't worry about people. That's our biggest problem today. Carry favor with this one, carry favor with this one, carry favor with this one. What they'll give you? Connect yourself to Allah. That's when things will happen. So we must remember this. So we completed the Quran Sharif inside the Kaaba. Alhamdulillah. So that is, so it's Allah's Fadl. Dharika Fadlullah yu'tihi may yasha. So when you go to Baytullah, brothers and sisters, so make sure our intention is sahih. Make as much tawaf as possible. And your hajj, it must be a quality hajj. From now, there are so many hajj kitabs written. So, khudu anni manasikakum. They take your hajj from me, meaning that you perform a quality hajj. Not you just go and make how we want to and that. How did Nabi alayhi salatu salam perform the hajj? So that is what we should be doing. Then the next one is that Madinah Munawwara. When we stand there for Salat and Salam and so forth, three things we must do. From now, learn. Labbaik Allah wa labbaik, we must learn. We must learn how to read Salat and Salam. Our brothers, they go there, they fumble with the kitab, the police come, chase them away. Lot of problems. From now, learn <coughs> these three, four sentences. as salatu wa salamu alayka ya Rasool Allah. as salatu wa salamu alayka ya Habib Allah. As-salatu wa salamu alayka ya khatam al-nabiyyin. As-salatu wa salamu alayka ya muzzambil. As-salatu wa salamu alayka ya muddathir. All these words in the Quran. So the titles which all might Allah address the master alayhi salatu salam, you use the same. And then in the ending, you read the words we read in our salat. As-salatu wa salamu alayka ayu al-nabi. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As-salamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salihin. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Wa ashadu anna Muhammad an abdu rasoolu. We bear the faith and testimony right in front of Habib Allah, Nabi Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then remember that you convey the salams of people. This one gives salam, that's fine. Third one, very important. You can say it both ways. Ishfa Ali Ya Rasulullah, you intercede for me, O Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Or you say, Allahumma Zukna, Shafat and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya Allah, let Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam intercede for me, my parents, my children, brothers, sisters, family, whoever else we want to include. And you include the whole Ummah. Then, brothers, sisters, quickly, the last 15 minutes down. In Makkah, Mukarramah, there are certain places you should visit. The normal places they will tell you to visit, when we take people for ziyarat, we take them to Jabal e That is where Sayyidina Bakr Siddiq was with Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You go to Mina, Arafat, Musdalifa, you go to Jabal e Nur, 
you go to the graveyard. Make sure, brothers, you go to the graveyard. There, Fridays especially, I told you the hadith. Go and give salam, convey salam to our mother, Sayyida Khadija radiallahu anha. I find this very, very strange. When we go for Umrah and Hajj, I announce Friday we're going. When we go in Medina, 20, 30, 40, 50 brothers will come. When we announce in Makkah, because it's 15, 20 minute walk, so we can't take taxi and all, we just walk. So you will find five, six brothers come. Imagine. We even forgot everything that Sayyidah Khadija did for us. Innaha kanat wa kanat. Bukhari's hadith. One day, you know, your brothers are in Pretoria, it's full of barakat, everything barakat. Some of you got two, three, four wives here also, mashallah. So you all know the story. So, mashallah, that the one brother, he had two wives. So he told this wife, yeah, when I catch your hand and press it harder, you must know that I love you more. And he told the one the side the same thing in her ear. So what he do, he presses both their hands. So both think he loves them more, you see. So, so you have to be diplomat when you have two, three wives, you know, understand. So anyway, that in a case like this, now Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha, she never even saw Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu anha. So in a case like... What's your name? Cell phone. Somebody's cell phone. So anyway, check your cell phone there, brothers. So anyway, Hazrat Aisha radiallahu anha hardly saw Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. So in a case like that, one day <laughs> Nabi alayhi salatu salam was praising Sayyidah Khadija. She was like that. So that Aisha, you know, woman. So she said, what your old lady you worry about and all these things here and all. Allah Ta'ala gave you nice meeting. <laughs> Nabi alayhi salam said, that is in Bukhari Sharif of Aisha. She believed in me when the world rejected me. She gave me all her wealth when no one was prepared to assist me. She's the mother of my children, six children, the mother of Husayda Khadija, the mother, four daughters, two sons. Hazrat Ibrahim, the son of Nabi alayhi salam, the mother is Maria Kriptiya. Seven children, six from Sayyidah Khadija. Don't speak of her like this. Because in Naha Kaanat wa Kaanat. She was unique and unique. You can't, you can't do it. Now we, the Ummah, we got no time to even stand by a grave and make salam. So what are we? We are traitors or not? We are Nibak Haram or not? What we are? Think about how we can forget all these things. So we must remember you go there. Then you take the taxi. You got enough money, enough Islam. Go just outside to Makkah. There's a place called there, Hudaybiyah. Nowadays, they call it Shumaysiya. So they, in the sixth year of the Hijrah, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came, 1400, 1500 Sahaba, it means between that. So they were stopped there, and they couldn't come further. The Masjid is still there, and it's called Masjidul Hudaybiyah. So go visit Dari to Rakat Salat there. Then, outside Makkah, there is Masna Ul Kiswa. You see that black cloth there. Similar to that, where they make the hilaf of the Kaaba, it's called Masna ul Kiswa. So 20 million Saudi riyals it costs them. Every year when we go to Arafat, then they bring the five plots, four for each wall and the fifth one for the door. So every year they change it. So that is known as Kiswa, what we call hilaf. So that is the main place. Then next to the Masnaul Kiswa, there is a Muthaf, there is a museum. It's all free, you don't have to pay. So you should go there, excellent things to see. You don't need anybody. Everything written in Arabic and in English. So we all know English. So you will find one pillar there of the Kaaba from Abdullah bin Zubayr's time. There you will find it. The oldest item in that museum. We've been many times, so brothers don't know, so you must learn all these places. The agent you ask, he'll tell you they're not allowed. Agent have more time for all this. You know, in our memory, we say, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know? So, so, so this type of thing, the agent have more time for all this. They say, you know what I mean? So they have more time for all these things. Say, you know what I mean? 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 You leave the agent, they got more interested. They're just interested in their money and all that. 
you go and catch that Mawlana who's in your group and that Mawlana, you take us there, Sheikh, you take us there and all that. So if you speak, then you go to these places. You all understood? So I remember. In Medina Munawwara, also there are four or five places you should try and go. Number one is, is a personal friend of ours, mashallah. So if you go to Dawudiya, now you'll know if you come out from Masjid Nabawi, then on the one side you will see that, uh, or you will see Oberoi on one side, and the other side the big hotel and Warul Medina, Mohan Peak you will see. So from Mohan Peak you walk downwards, your back is facing the Qibla, walk right, right down, and then when you come to the big intersection, three roads, you will see one marble building there, it's called Dawudiya. Go to Dawudiya and just go there, not on a Friday, other days, after Asar or in the morning, and there's a beautiful museum there. So free there it is. You go there, and it's, mashallah, the brother's name is Ahmad Shaban. Sometimes he's there, sometimes his brother is there, Khalid. So you must visit that museum there. Second one, you should visit in Medina Munawwara, besides, you know, the famous places, Masjid Al-Kuba, Masjid al Uhud, Baqi, the graveyard. Or, there are two, three other important places to visit in Medina Munawwara. One is, let me show you this. What is that? Bring the Quran there, the Makkah Quran, the Medina, the green one. Let's teach you something. Ah, is right. It's not translation one, no? Huh? It's a translation one, this. It's not a translation. Oh, I'll bring the normal, this translation. Look at this. It's fine, let's see the normal one. Uh, when you go, you must meet them. This person here is 84, 85 years old now. Here is it here. You come see him also. See if you can read Arabic. Waqad katabahu al khattat Usman Taha. You see that? The person who wrote, no computer and all that business. He wrote with his hands. He's from Halab, so you must remember that he's from Halab. Halab is your Aleppo, the whole day you see on your TV and then. So Halab is Aleppo, Sheikh Saab only comes from Halab. Sheikh Usman Taha is from Halab. It takes him three years to write one Quran Sharif. Really? It takes him three years to write one Quran Sharif. He wrote the Quran seven times, according to the different Kirat and all. So when I went to meet him a few years ago in his house in Medina, I it must be 85 now, the time was 82. So it must be around there. So and he's very ill now, I don't know if they allow visitors also. So anyway, we met him, I told him, Sheikh, I can't sit in your house. He looked at me, he said, now what's wrong? I said, Sheikh, you wrote the Quran and I heard you wrote seven times, he said, yes. I said, how I can sit in your house? You take out your hand and I'll kiss it, then I sit down. So he laughed, he started smiling. He said, just a few years ago, Sheikh Mutawalli Shaharawi came from Egypt. He did the same thing, I didn't know. So he said, he also refused to sit and said, I must take out my hand, he'll kiss it, then he'll sit. See, brothers, what khidmat they made of Quran. So today, that same Quran Sharif, over 30, 40 million copies are printed already. And you see, when the Hajis we come back, they give you one, one copy. Both haram, only this Quran you will find. But now we South Africans, India, Pakistanis, we can't read this Quran, you know. We want ulta pesh. <laughs> you know, you know ulta pesh. We want, uh, we want karazabar. Then all, yeah, what is all this and all these things here? What we know, Hamza Qati and Hamza Wasli and all that. That is proper. That is India style writing, you know, proper then. So anyway, you must remember, so they make blue cover. They say that Bichara, Indian, Pakis came, they will do big stuff, they will read the Quran upside down. So give them ulta fish. You understood? So give them all the ulta fish. So then I told him, Sheikh, write my name. So he said, okay. So I wrote Abdul Qadir Hussein. He went inside, he came back after 15, 16 months, I don't know how long. Just to write that. You know these calligraphers, subhanallah. When they write, they see from all sides. So I was looking at everything there in his house and all that. So he came, he told me, take it, and I did one favor for you, he told me. So I said, what you did, Sheikh? 
You say, the same pen I use for the Quran, I wrote your name with that, but I don't show you the pen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so you leave the pen, keep my pen for you. <laughs> so if you come one day lens, I'll show it to you. The next time I went, I went to Fatima, you understood? My wife. So no wife, no life, you know? So, then. so I told Sheikh, write down now my wife also. He said, no, I'm very tired. So I told her her name, Fatima Usman Hussein. He jumped up. She said, what? He said, my daughter's name, Fatima Usman Hussein. I said, you've got two daughters, now write down. So he said, okay. So mashallah, he wrote and he gave her more gifts than me also. He took another Quran and he wrote the name and everything. You all understood on the Quran also. And he said, give me my daughter also. So see, these things here, these are the great, great people you must meet. You go Makkah, meet Sheikh Sabuni, go Madina, meet Sheikh Dr. Usman Taha. These are the great, great people, brothers. They're not known to the world, but the khidmat they made. Leave them for a little while, come to South Africa. This is an indictment, a disgrace actually, for us, the South African Muslim. If you ask the South African Muslim, yes, Quran Sharif today. The Quran is there, okay, we got Quran there, Quran there. Your sons are Hafiz, you are Hafiz. When the first Quran came to South Africa, we all know the Kafir politicians, but we know nothing about Islam. What a disgrace it is. The Kafirs we know, Islam we don't know. You must remember Qazi Abdul Salam, Imam Tuanguru, Rahimahullah, from 1781 to 1793. 1781, 1781 to 1793, he was incarcerated, he was put in Robben Island for his political, he was a political prisoner. And in 17, 1781 to 1793, he was an alim of the Hafiz, the miracle of Quran, which the South African Muslim don't know. Instead of worrying about all these kafirs, we should worry about this. So we must remember that from 1781 to 1793, he wrote the Quran Sharif by memory at Robben Island. The first Quran that saw the light in South Africa. If you want to see that Quran, go to Hilton Hotel. You know Hilton Hotel in Cape Town? Opposite there is Masjid Oval. Oval Masjid woke up, green color, and you will find the photocopy there. You understood? It's my long to the Imam. So, Ismail Lund is also a student, he studied well. So, he's one of the Imams there. So anyway, that Quran is not the original. It's photocopy, because you know South Africa is too much chores. You know? <laughs> so, they will steal the Quran also. <laughs> when I went now for Umrah, it must make me mad, but I have to say, you know, some things. So, no, I'll leave it, it's very bad thing to say. So anyway, it's now he's on tape also, it's not getting in trouble also. So when we private something, we can say. So anyway, the South Africa is too much chores and crooks and all these things there. Yeah? So therefore, they put the photocopy there. They understood? The original, the ulama in Cape Town, they kept it by them. So that is our first Quran. 1781 to 1793, he wrote Quran. 1794, he built the first masjid in Islam, South Africa. First Jummah Salat, he made. First Madrasa, he made. But the Ummah don't know. So what good is this Ummah in South Africa? The Kafir politicians, you know. What good is that? Is that a disgrace? Think properly what we do. So remember this, brothers, if we don't know our history, South African Muslim history, we don't know our history of Makkah, Medina, the chances of future, they for our children. You will see today the one brother came, what he said? He said our children go to white school, they're just busy with the white girls. It must be like that. Because in their mind, they got apartheid the whole time. White is right, West is the best. So then let me be honest about these things. No sense pushing everything under the carpet. So we must remember these things here, that we don't show them Islam. The vacuum is created. Hmm. What do you expect? So therefore, brothers, when we go for Hajj, what is the sign? Imam, last point, you finish. Imam al-Hasan al-Basri, rahimahullah, was asked, Tell me, O oh Imam, you the sage of the age, how I know my Hajj is accepted? We all go for Hajj. We come back. At the airport, you see the demand. Last year, I saw the one South African. I'm standing at the back. So, we were in the same plane. Last year or two years, I can't remember. So, I know the guy. We didn't know I'm watching him. Because I was at the back. Sir, so he had to go through the scale 
But they got this Pakistani guy there. It must take 50 riyal, 100 riyal, pushed it in his pocket. That bag didn't see the scale, it went over the scale. <laughs> so I called him after. I said, come here, brother, your hajj is 100% accepted. So he looked at me and said, why? I say I never saw a karamat like that. So <laughs> the bag doesn't touch the skin, it goes over the skin. <laughs> From the airport or the Jetta airport already, all Unda Danda stuff. <coughs> See South Africa, don't speak about the government. They corrupted like you can. You corrupted right in Makkah. Who gave them right? Huh? All upside down. Thing. So the person there, Hajrat Aswad there, by the Murtazam is crying, crying. So you see, Ya Allah, what do this person is making? So you see, Ya Allah, make our custom very easy for us. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, brothers, sisters, Imam al Hassan al Basri, Rahimahullah, till now he looks at me, but he looks down. You know, the brother. He goes, I think, how's the bag? Still flying. <laughs> So anyway, the Imam al Hasan al Basri said the sign of Hajj is accepted. Al Raghba ila al Akhirah, al Raghba anid dunya. The interest in this world is no more. The glitter or glitter and glamour of the world will not attract you. The shock, the love for year after that will attract. That's the sign the Hajj is accepted. So inshallah all the brothers and sisters who made a who make intention for Hajj, Allah Ta'ala accept it and Allah Ta'ala protect the holy places. While I'm on this, let me teach you, I don't think you make note of this. Tomorrow you must just remind me if I forget I must three seventeen. Three one seven Hijra. Mama make note. Three one seven Hijra. There was a group of people. They were called the Karamita. Karamita are an offshoot of the Shias. And this Karamita, the Shias, that they stole the Hajar Aswad from its place. And when they stole it, for 22 years there was no Hajar Aswad. Therefore, if I don't know if you all saw Hajar Aswad properly, our people just kiss anyway, you know. Uh, kiss the wife on the forehead, kiss here, kiss here, anyway, as long as the kiss is alright, look here, like that. <laughs> So you say, I kiss, they don't see properly. There is no Hajar Aswad one stone. If you look at Hajar Aswad, it's eight pieces. Understood? And Hajar Aswad came down on Jabal Abi Qubais, on the mountain where the palace is now. So it was one piece. The Shia, the Karamita in 317, they stole the Hajar Aswad and they smashed it and they took it to Bahrain. So after 22 years, it came back and the pieces came back. So for 22 years, remember, there was no Hajar Aswad. This is what the Shia want to do now also. They don't need to know what is the real politics going on. So they want to take control of Makkah, Mukarramah, and Madinah Munawwara. One side, the Shia want to take control of Makkah, Mukarramah, Madinah Munawwara, and the Yahud on the other side, they want to take control of Majid Al-Aqsa. So minimum, Tonight is later to Jumu'ah. You can't do anything. You know we what we are. If a person comes with water pistol, we will surrender. So this, uh, you know how we are. So this type of thing. So we don't know what is jihad and all these things. Yeah? Anyway, Allah protect us. So that in a case like that, at least money memory to Rakat Salat. Ya Allah, protect the Haramain Sharifain from the enemies and protect Masjid Al-Aqsa from the Yahud. So that is money memory requirement for all of us. Okay, brothers, the floor is open. One only request I got. Don't come and make me. My name is A.K. Hussein. You know, don't make me A.K. 47. Now you see one brother here. One will say, oh, let me ask a question. Then I shoot him on your behalf. You understand? I'm not here for all these things. You got question? You ask? Fine. Don't come make me. I'm not interested in your personal, all this funny politics. And this guy did this and this guy did this and all the waste of time. So you're not interested in all these type of things. Yeah. You got questions? You ask. Fine, no problem. G. Come, brothers, quick, quick. No questions. G. First time you going, brother? 
विच ग्रुप यू गए वेरी गुड जी द फोर्थ कलीमा दुआ व दुआबिया कबली द हदीस इन तिरमी नबी सल्लाम से हज किताब ब्रदर्सिन Muhammad Imran the most important thing is when the sun goes down in Arafat your heart must be a testimony i made so much tauba allah has forgiven me never leave arafat with a negative heart always leave arafat with a positive frame of mind you got it you go with your wife one man alone oh, you're not married माशा यू गो दे यू गेट मेरी कम बैक जो डबलन जाता है डबल होकर वापस आता है माशा ब्राइट फ्रॉम यू हिट दे कम ब्रदर्स वेरी गुड माशा जी वो गॉट सम क्वेश्चन जी ब्रदर The new train. Yeah, because previously people never used to make jibna salam to the Prophet because you could give him salam to the roof with an angel. And then you hit. My father performed Hajj in '63. From that time, I remember we give him salam. But it was it was it was a, a long year. Like if you if you if you read the ritual, it's you know the angels are taking their salam immediately. You must remember both if from the suburb you read the ritual if and you tell somebody to give salam to them. You, I'm in Lens. You in Pretoria. You can phone me directly, but somebody tell me that he's coming to meet me. You say give him my salam. So you're not going to say it's not permissible. It's permissible. So similarly here also that you tell somebody give my salam. It's fine. Umar bin Abdul Aziz. He ruled this ummah from the year 99 to 101. Umar bin Abdul Aziz was one of the greatest rulers after the Sahaba. He was one of the greatest rulers. Therefore, he's called Umar Asani. He used to send special people. When they go to Medina, he said, "Take my name and give salam to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam." It's not started today; it started from those days. It's the same question I posed to the to the Alims there. That, 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 uh, Which Alims? The the Alims that give lectures on it in during Asr Asr Maghrib time. Those Alims will tell you everything is bidah. You understand? They want to do not from Muslim. Ah. So he must ask them that Umar bin Abdul Aziz and all of them they never knew them. The greatest people of the Ummah they never knew them. Jee, come. We follow Quran, Hadith, and Sahaba and this. We don't follow today's people. Today's people is no tekana. You understood? Okay, Jee. Swedish. I thought you have got a lot of questions. Who's the other brother going? You? Yeah. Okay. Which group you going in, brother? Ah, oh, sure. Okay. When you when you going? Inshallah, we'll be on the thirty first of this month. Oh, both of you are going thirty first. Ah, sure. Very good. Thirty first is Monday, yeah? Yes. It's direct flight to Madina. <coughs> Very good. Ah, sure. First time. Ah, you first time. Ah, sure. Very good. जी चलो नो वेरी गुड क्वेश्चन यू मेक डू फिनिश चलो वेरी गुड टाइम मेक शॉट डू इंशाल्लाह अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह रब्बिल आलमीन वस्सलातु वस्सलाम अला अशरफिल अंबिया व मुरसलीन सैयिदना मुहम्मद व अला आलिहि व सहबी अजमाइन اللهم اجزل الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر المجاهدين في كل مكان اللهم احفظ بلاد الحرمين الشريفين من كل سوء ومكروه اللهم احرر المج... اللهم طهر المسجد الاقصى من اليهود الغاصبين المحتلين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين وارحم موتانا وموتى المسلمين 
ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وادنا مناسكنا وتب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم قال الله تعالى في شان حبيبي ان الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد واصحابه وبارك وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين رحمه الله